This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and bienvenidos to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion. Today's program is about Miss Latina Hawaii. This organization provides a scholarship to many young ladies and gives them the opportunity to represent the Latin community. Today's guest is Charlene Mojica Farias. She is the current Miss Latina Hawaii 2018. And she's here uh, to tell about her story, about her own personal experience throughout the competition, her platform, what she's doing for the community, and also her future plan. Bienvenida, welcome to Hispanic Hawaii. Thank you so much for having me today, hello. All right, <laughs> aloha. <laughs> aloha. <laughs> well, I wanna say congratulations. Uh, ja well done, I was there through the competition from the beginning to the end, mm -hmm. and it was a wonderful program. Thank you so much, it was so much fun. <laughs> yes. Well, a lot of people within the community wanna to get to know you. Yes, you of are. course. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and your heritage? Yes, of course. So my name is actually really long. It's Shailen Milagro Kuipoko Baile Hua Mojica Farias. Trying to be elementary, Milagros. learning Milagros. Milagro. How, how, how do you say the rest? Kuipoko Baile Hua Mojica Farias. Okay, I'm Yeah, <laughs> trying to be elementary student, trying to learn all those letters in your name. It was okay. very difficult. And I am 18 years old, and I graduated from Kalani High School, class of 2017. And I am a chop suey mix. I have Puerto Rican, Hawaiian, Portuguese, Filipino, Chinese, Caucasian, and it's all the best of all those worlds. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your family. Yes, yeah, so my mother's side of the family is Puerto Rican, Filipino, and then my father's side is the rest, the Hawaiian, Caucasian, Portuguese, that. everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and both my families are very wonderful. They continue to support me, and I really appreciate it. And they're always so much fun. We all, both sides love celebration, and it's always amazing food and dancing and songs, and it's always a lot of fun to be with them. I, I can see that. When you was going through the competition, I can hear everybody just screaming. <laughs> I, I knew they were your family. That was my family right there in the front <laughs> row. <laughs> all right. So when you find out about this scholarship pageant, mm -hmm. uh, what motivated you to enter in this competition? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Be when honest. I first <laughs> heard about it, I doubted my ability to even join a pageant, let alone win one. And now I look back at it, I will do it all over again because it was such an amazing opportunity. And when I did get back to one of the board members of Miss Latina Hawaii, I told her I was interested because a lot of the pros was way more than the cons of joining this amazing pageant. And I look back at it and I'm so glad that I got back to her because I motivated myself to challenge you know, myself and to get out there and to do something for our community. But you yeah. know, it takes a lot of preparation and dedication. Mm -hmm. And many young ladies, they might want to participate sometime this year. Mm -hmm. They might want to know, you know, what do you do to get prepared for that? Can you tell me about your training and your preparation for the competition? Yes, of course. So we do this fun thing called mock interviews. It trains us for the actual interview with the judge panel. And what you do is you basically let the judges know about yourself and who you are and what makes you you. And then we also done some walking practices, which I very in, I enjoyed the most because I never could walk in heels before this. <laughs> but look at me in six inch heels, I can do it now. And we also did a lot of physical training and it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. All right. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> so don't be intimidated, right? Just come in and do yeah, it. Yeah, just come in and do it because okay. you can do whatever you put your mind to. <laughs> All right, you compete in five different categories. Yes. Uh, one was uh, lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, swimwear, the tiling. Uh, you had the evening wear, mm -hmm. uh, the private interview on the stage interview. Yes. I want to know <laughs> which one out of all those different categories was the most challenging to you and which one you liked the most and why? Okay, I believe the most challenging would be the on-stage question. I mean, at the top of your head, you have to come up with an amazing answer to answer the question, but also let the audience know who you are because the judges do get to know you, but the audience doesn't really get an interview with you. So this is the audience's chance to get to know who you are and what makes you you. And I think my favorite would definitely be the talent because it's your way to show everyone your strength and how, like your passion, what you're passionate about. And I enjoy showing everyone my talent and 
Yeah, that's my favorite. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you, when they was asking you, do you still remember that question on this day's question? Yes, it was whether or not I felt that social media was a positive or negative impact. Yeah, right? that is true. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. You still remember? I do. Well, a lot of people get nervous and they can't remember any date. Oh, I remember. <laughs> All right, so tell me, do you still remember your answer? I believe I do. <laughs> yeah. uh, my answer was, I believe it was a negative impact because yes. it takes away our value of spending time with our family and doing our hobbies and experiencing all of our memories with our family. That is true. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Mm -hmm. well, but you, you, you do dance, right? You're a dancer and you yes. do different type of dance. Yes, I do. Can you tell me some about those different dance that you do? Yes. Yeah. So at a young age, I started to learn hula. When you come from a family of hula dancers, you kind of just go into it at a young age. And I've also danced, of course, Tahitian, which is my talent. And as I got in more into my Polynesian culture, I joined Polynesian clubs at school where I got to learn Tongan, Samoan, and then I got my job at the Sara Panlulu, which I've learned Maori, Hakka, and Pueblos. Oh, wow. So yes. Styles. Yes, and they're all so beautiful. <laughs> all right, we're going to show a video of you performing your talent during the day of the competition. Oh, yes, exciting. Okay, okay. perfect. Let's watch it. <laughs> okay. So how many hours does it take for you to be able to do a Tahitian dance? I believe that <laughs> anyone can do it, to be honest. Um, that particular dance I made myself, and I believe I made it within two weeks. Of course, after that, you continue to critique it and everything. But I believe everyone can do it, to be honest. Yeah. So that's why it was the best part of the category, the competition. Yes, was it's, yes it's my dance. way to show my strength, which is being an entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can push a picture uh, uh, when you was last like, showing, you know, uh, when you soon wear and, and, mm -hmm. and showing you different clothes, you know. Uh, can we put that picture, please? Uh, and then we can talk about it real quick. Because in the competition, uh, here it is, uh, it's showing a uh, different category. You yeah. have the evening wear, and then we show you that you're doing uh, your Tahitian dance, which is as part of the all the talent, and mm -hmm. also you. Uh, with a swimwear, and, and in the beginning you had a special dance, it's called the Dance of Miss Latina. Mm -hmm. And tell me about that, that clothes that you was wearing. Yes, of course. So I basically wanted to make my own costume for this intro because I thought it would be more like more special to me. And when I went online to go see like different styles, I caught this picture of these people dancing. And it was so beautiful to me to have this skirt. It was high-waisted with the flower on the side and the big flowers. We love our flowers. <laughs> so I had to put that in there. <laughs> well, you look great. It was Thank perfect, you. perfect, perfect. Well, let me ask you, um, and I want to put this picture right here, because when you was going through the competition, mm -hmm. uh, we, we had uh, to, you know, Miss Latina Hawaii, uh, which is, is one of the title, mm -hmm. and they have Miss Paradise Latina. Yes. And, uh, the NC uh, calling for the first, you know, title, which it was Miss Paradise Latina, mm -hmm. and the winner Tiffany Johnson. She was not able to be here with us, mm -hmm. but uh, in the picture, I seen you looking over her shoulder. You know, she's winning that mm -hmm. title. What was going through your mind at that given time? I was honestly so proud of her. I mean, she has worked so hard, and it's not easy to do a pageant, and she did it with her all. And I believe that she deserved it because she is genuinely beautiful and she really worked hard for that title and she got it. <laughs> yeah. And you was kind of scared, like, well, uh, it's only one title one left. One title left, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's 
so many ladies who are here on the stage. Mm -hmm. Are you was losing any hopes? Uh, honestly, I trusted that whoever was going to be the next Miss Latina Hawaii would be a great title holder. And I wasn't very scared of not being called because I would be proud of whoever it would be. But I was very excited to hopefully <laughs> hear my name because <laughs> you work really hard for something like this. That's true. Yeah. Well, we want to show a, a, a quick video okay. uh, when the NC, which is Maleko, he finally called for the new Miss Latina Hawaii 2008. Okay. And then we can talk about it. Okay. okay. I can hear your whole entire family screaming. <laughs> oh yes, that support system is amazing. <laughs> so what was going through your mind at that given time when you was waiting and waiting and he finally called your name? Oh, all I could do was cry because I was just so proud of myself. And you know, everything that I've been through in my life, I've been through so much struggles and complications. And to know that I've come this far and that I've won something of such value it was so important to me and all i could do was just cry out of joy because <laughs> i was so proud of myself and how far i've come and that was your first competition that was my first competition oh my goodness <laughs> which made it even great. more special to me <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's great yeah all right but we are about to take a quick break okay and a great message to the community and then we're going to come back and continue talking story okay perfect okay <laughs> She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. That's the wolf. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, ah. yeah this is the starting line. Push. Ah. Ah. When this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm here with the Miss Latina Hawaii 2018, Shirley Mojica Farias, <laughs> talking story. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now that you represent the Latin community, tell mm -hmm. me some of your responsibilities. Yes. So some of my responsibilities are obviously getting involved in the Latin community. And one thing that we have done this beginning of January, actually, was this jam for Puerto Rico. It was amazing to see everyone come together and have fun and enjoy themselves, but then again, raise money for our families in Puerto Rico. And we also do the Cinco de Mayo, of course, and the Hispanic Festival, which is in October every year. Yeah. And this Friday, actually, I'm going to Waipahu High School to do a presentation about being a Latino woman in Hawaii to the Spanish Honor Society. You so also exciting. participated in the Martin Luther King Parade. Yes, Tell me about that. that was amazing to just see all the support that everyone has for the parade and to see everyone come together and make it happen. It was wonderful to be part of it. Wow. <laughs> well, I know you ran for, for the Miss Latina Hawaii and, you, and mm -hmm. you won the competition. You had to present a platform. Yes. Uh, tell me about your platform. Yes, of course. So my platform is Care for Youth. Care is an acronym for Community Actions, Raising Encouragement. And when I had to think, think about a platform, the first thing that came to my mind was obviously homelessness. Yes. Because I've been a part of helping the homeless community since I was a young girl. And of course, I wanted to make that a huge level for me to talk about within my community because it really touches my heart when I get to go out there and change the lives of people, you know? And I've actually went towards helping the youth in particular because I thought, 
why not try and break the cycle once and for all? And I believe by breaking the cycle would be through the families and through the children. Because a lot of times the cycle keeps going on to where a family is homeless and then the children become, and it's, it's an unbreakable cycle, which is why I want to break it. And that's why I went on to making these care bags. I started years back actually as care packages, but I made them care bags now for the children who can reuse these bags and hopefully go to school with them. And in these bags, I put necessities, hygiene products, and school supplies, of course, so that these children, you know, we can at least alleviate some of their issues that they have on their daily lives, and they can continue to just be children and to look forward to their goals and their ambitions. And I also do a penny count uh, with Project Hawaii. They have allowed me to go out and be a coordinator with schools to go and ask people to just give a single penny because it really goes a long way. One penny at a time. One penny at a time. And it's amazing because what they do is they take these pennies and they use that money to buy necessities for our poverty-stricken or homeless children in Hawaii. And it's amazing, I feel, to do this campaign because I'm going into schools and I'm getting the youth themselves involved in helping their peers. And it's amazing, yeah. So you become an example for them to follow. Yes, exactly. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of work. A lot so of work. you say you're working with an organization uh, what is the name of the organization once again? Project Hawaii. Project Hawaii. Yes. And they concentrate on helping all the homeless kids in Hawaii. Yes, homeless and poverty stricken children. And they, they, they only do it right here in Oahu or they, they do a different island in Hawaii? No, no. So actually, you can go on their website, Project Hawaii, okay. and you can go and donate however much you would like to. And it really stays, it stays in the city of Hawaii. And it just helps all of our keiki who have been through all these struggles. Yeah. Do you have any other organization that you're working with? For now, it's just Project Hawaii, but I also am going to distribute my care bags to different shelters. And right now, I'm looking at Next Step Shelter to go and distribute my care bags to all the children who they are helping at the time. But you also work with the Children America Network, right? Yes, that is our so, national platform. Yeah, tell me about that. Yes, of course. So being a part of the American, I mean, excuse me, the American organization, we have this national platform, which is Children America Network. It's where everyone just pretty much donates a dollar at a time and it is given to the sickly children. And it is also given to medical research. And it's an amazing way to get the community involved to want to help. And it is just an amazing organization to be a part of. So if you, if you want any business or any person to help you out, mm -hmm. we care how they can do that. Yes, yeah, so on all my social medias, I have links to Children Miracle Network where you can go and donate if you would like to. And also I have a Care for Youth page on Facebook where you can keep up to date with everything that we do or donate if you'd like to or just keep in touch with everything, all our projects and everything. I just want to know how you're going to be able to accomplish all this because you, you, you work, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to support, you know, with your platform, you know, the mm -hmm. Homeless of Hawaii, Kids of Homeless of Hawaii, and also you're going to help the Children America Network. Mm -hmm. How are you going to manage all this? Honestly, it's a lot, but it is going to be worth it. I know it. And it's all time management. I have this huge planner of mine, <laughs> and I have a whiteboard in my room. Okay. I just love to time manage myself and just jot things down and check things off as I, as I do them. And it's, I believe time management is the key. <laughs> I want to know a little bit more about your job. What do you do every day? Yes, yeah, so I'm yeah. an entertainer on the Star of Honolulu, Dinner Cruise Boat, which is at Aloha Tower, and I'm a performer there, or entertainer is more like it, and we basically just dance our heart outs every night, every single <laughs> night, boat. on the boat, <laughs> yes. It's not as scary, or it's not as shaky, I promise. Okay. <laughs> and it's just beautiful, you know, to show our culture and share our culture with tourists or anyone from around the world, to meet new people, and to get to hear about their experiences and everything that they've been through. It's a lot of fun. I want to know what your parents think right now Wow, she's the current Miss Latina Hawaii 2018. Are they still in shock or they're kind of like, <laughs> finally they realize, okay, she's the winner. And we had to support her and, and do all these great things that she had to do. Yes, of course. So my parents are so proud of me because they know that, you know, everything that I've been through in my life, it has done its hardest to put me down and to bring me back. But I just continue to push forward. It's my motivation. You know, everything that I've been through, it may have been negative at the time, but now I look at it as a positive because now I can use that as my motivation to push forward and to challenge myself all the time. And I think that my parents are very proud of how far I've come and 
I think they are realizing that I'm finally a winner. <laughs> but <laughs> but I feel a while, like, right? Yeah. Thinking, oh my God, yes, she is the winner. Yes. Finally. But of course, <laughs> for every family, I feel like you will always feel that your girl is the winner, no matter what, you That's know? That's true. So let's talk about your future plans. Yes. So after this, after Miss Latina Hawaii, we are going on to Miss Hawaii, which is a part of the Miss, Organi Miss America organization, excuse me. And I honestly want to go to Miss Hawaii and I want to share my platform and I want to hopefully go to Miss America and share it nationwide. Because it is not only something that is happening here in Hawaii, it is happening all around the world. And I want to make that difference and I want to get more people involved in our projects. And later on, I would definitely want to become a neonatal nurse. It's been a dream of mine for a very long time. And witnessing a lot of premature babies in my family has driven me to want to help those babies that go into the NICU and hopefully save their lives. So that's part of your scholarship program, you'll be able to go back to school, right? Yes, with all the scholarships, I can definitely go to school and pursue my career ambition. And that is great, that is wonderful. <laughs> I want to know a little bit more about, uh, more in, in detail, you know, about the competition. You know, what, what would you tell a young lady who want to be part of this competition or want to enter next year, what is your, your recommendations? I would honestly encourage everyone to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's a once in a lifetime thing and it is an amazing experience. I've learned so much about myself and as I said, I doubted my ability to win a, you know, win a pageant and here I am. And I believe if you put your mind to it, you can definitely accomplish anything and you honestly are given so much opportunities that you may not have get anywhere else. And I say, go for it, take that risk, challenge yourself, because I'd rather you say you tried your hardest or you did that rather than I wish I did. You know, it's, it's amazing to go through all this and I encourage everyone to do it. Wait, when, when I was watching the program, um, Maleko, the NC, said mm -hmm. that something that you wanted to do is to interview the person in the United <laughs> States. Yes. Tell me about that, why? Okay, so if you ever get the opportunity, <laughs> if I ever get the opportunity, <laughs> I would definitely go write a lot of questions down. Of course, because okay. I want to ask him so much things. I mean, I really want to understand his morals, his values, his reasons for. I mean, everyone has a reason for everything that they do, you know. And I feel maybe we're not giving him a chance to express himself, or maybe we're giving him too much of a chance to express <laughs> himself. <laughs> and I honestly just want to know, you know, what drove him to be a president at first, and what he really thinks making America great again is to him. Because I feel like we all have different meanings of that, and I definitely want to know, get to know him and his reasons for everything that he's doing. Is what are your opinion about the immigration? Sorry. Uh, what are your opinion about this immigration law? Oh, I honestly think that America is an amazing country. You know, you're, you're given freedoms, you're given opportunities, and people come here, and they've been coming here for years, you know, and I feel like trying to send them back is just, it's horrible. I mean, they're here, they're obviously, they're, if they're not doing anything wrong, I mean, there's no reason to send them back. I mean, they're taxpayers probably, and they come and they give to our community, they work, they're part of who we are, and I feel like sending them away is, not a great thing to do when they're all they've done is trying to get a better life for themselves. That is true. Well, any final thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you for having me, and of course, to everyone out there, I just want to tell you to go for go for everything that you ever want to do because it, you are given so many opportunities in your life, and I say go for it, challenge yourself, and be the best that you can be. Well, once again, I want to say congratulations. Thank you to coming to Hispanic Hawaii and tell your story about <laughs> yes, how you become the Miss Latina Hawaii. All right, I want to say thank you so much for watching uh, Hispanic Hawaii. Don't forget, you can rewatch this program at fintechhawaii.com and many other programs. Aloha, gracias, hasta luego. Thank you so much.